<clears throat> our live hello everybody this is Constance Hi. from the Galaxy. Hello. I am super excited we have a very cozy evening in store for you which makes my heart happy because with the chilly weather there is nothing better than a good cozy to sit down with a cozy blanket to and what's even more exciting is so we have Lee Hollis and M V. is it Byron? Burn. Burn. Thank you. I tried to be too fancy and I burned myself <laughs> with your last name. I am V Burn. And I am super excited because for all of our cozy lovers, one of the big questions we'll always get is what's a good first series? What's a good new series? And both of these books are first in series. And I the title of the books would probably be beneficial for both of you. We're gonna have Murder at the PTA by Lee Hollis and then Meet Isabel puddles which is just so much fun to say by mv burn and i could go on about the mm -hmm. of both of these murders but i'm gonna go ahead and pass it on because our moderator for the evening is larissa she will be leading you all through the event and before i disappear this is the vanna white section so if you have any questions for our authors make sure you ask us questions are the super fun part about an event and it's why you guys are here so you will see down below where it says ask a question that is indeed where you can ask a question and the best way to celebrate a new book and it's coming into the world is to purchase that new book so of course <laughs> the bookseller you knew i was going to tell you where you can buy the book so if you look down below where it says buy book you can buy the book and you can even get a personalized book plate Larissa, you are in charge. I will see you guys at the end of the event. Have a good one. Thanks, Constant. Hi, guys. It's so nice to see <laughs> Hi, you Hi, Larissa. Hi, Larissa. Nice to see you. Um, so a little bit introduction on myself, so I don't seem like um, this out of the blue moderator. Uh, my name is Larissa Ackerman, and I am a communications manager at Kensington Publishing, where I work with many of our cozy mysteries, including Lee Hollis and M.V. Bird. So I'm really excited to moderate this discussion between them tonight for their new releases, which is Murder at the PTA and Meet Isabel Puddles. <laughs> um, so we'll start with Rick. For, um, so <laughs> Lee Hollis, his real name is Rick. So I'm going to accidentally call him Rick a few times, even though I'll try really hard to pronounce Lee Hollis. So <laughs> we'll start with you. Lee Hollis is the pen name for Rick Kopp, who is a veteran Hollywood screenwriter who has written for numerous television series, including The Golden Girls, Wings, Scooby-Doo, Teen Titans, and Barbershop. He's also the co-writer of the Brady Bunch movie and has written a number of novels under his own name. He also produces, writes, and stars in the hit web cities Where the Bears Are, with his sister, Holly Simison, I hope I pronounced her name, last name correctly, yeah. uh, he co-authors the Haley Powell Food and Cocktail Mysteries book series using the Lee Hollis name. He <clears> lives <throat> in Palm, Sp Palm Springs, California, and you can visit him at www.leehollismysteries.com. So Lee has written three cozy mystery series, and the Maya and Sarah Sandra mystery series is number three. Um, the other two include are the Haley Powell Mystery Series and the Desert Flowers Mystery Series. But today we'll be talking about the first book in his new Maya and Sandra Mysteries. Again, Murder at the PTA, which has the cutest, trying to get my hand, cutest cover. <laughs> so, Lee, can you tell us a little bit about Murder in the PTA? Yes, um, it all started because I was already doing two series for Kensington. I never dreamed I'd be doing a third. But my editor, John Scognamiglio, uh, called me up and said Barnes & Noble wanted to do an exclusive uh, release series. And so he goes, come up with something. And, you know, I already had two in the, you know, uh, in the works. So I remembered a pilot I had written for ABC back in 2005 called Soccer Moms. And it got produced with Kristen Davis, who was one of the actresses on Sex and the City, and, uh, and another actress named Gina Torres. And it was about two soccer moms who team up to be PIs. Well, it didn't get on the air <laughs> and it, it kind of died after that. And so that came back to me uh, as, as a possible idea because I love the idea of two very different women. One in, in this series is a private detective who's, uh, who was a cop and is a single mom now because her husband's incarcerated uh, for corruption. And the other one is a complete opposite, Sandra, who is the wife of a US Senator in the state of Maine and she's raising two sons. 
and a, uh, a suicide at the high school where their kids attend brings them together to to investigate a mystery because they they suspect that it, uh, foul play was involved as it is a cozy mystery after all, and that's how the whole series got started. So that is amazing that it was originally supposed to be a TV show with Kristen Davis. I yes. love her. <laughs> um, she was great in the pilot. They shot the. Oh, you got to even watch it. Oh no, Rick's disappeared. Oh no. Oh no, he'll come back. <laughs> Hopefully, he's possible. You know what? Okay, so um, Murder at the PTA, which was um, exclusively for Barnes and Noble for a year, has it. This event is the first event for its new general release for literally every bookstore ever um, in the United States. So while we're waiting for Rick to come back, we'll move on to Envy Byrne. So now it's your turn in the spotlight. <laughs> um, so Envy Byrne was born and raised in Lansing, Michigan, and much like the heroine of his Midden State mystery series, his family has had a home on Lake Michigan for nearly 100 years. He has an extensive career in television, first working at NBC on shows including Today, The David Letterman Show, and Saturday Night Live, and later writing for back. Mysteries and Scandals on E! Entertainment. You're back. <laughs> Be, uh, behind the music we've of each one, <laughs> we've moved on to uh, MV Burns' bio, and the Tyra Which Banks is show. endless. It never, go ahead, but it go ahead. It is endless. <laughs> You've worked on it's, a lot of TV It's more shows. like a resume than a bio, but go ahead. <laughs> It is kind of like your CV. The Tara Bing Show, Good Morning America, and Nancy Grace, to name a few. He currently lives in LA, where he continues to work as a writer-producer in unscripted television, but still goes back to his home state of Michigan every summer. And you can find him at mvburn.com. So MV Burn's debut novel, Meet Isabel Puddles, released last week. So Michael, your turn. Can you give us an overview about Isabel Puddles? Isabel Puddles is loosely based on my Aunt Isabel, who was one of the funniest people I've ever known. She was my mother's fraternal twin sister, and um, she passed away recently. And I wanted to write something um, as an homage to her, but also to Michigan, to that part of Michigan where I spent every summer of my life. <clears throat> the only, aside from, um, in my bio, it says I was raised in Lansing. I was, in fact, raised in Northern California. But okay. I went back to Michigan every summer um, to spend time with my mom's family at the lake. So I think that's why the, the, the state of Michigan is so, why I have such fond memories and um, why I wanted to place this book there. Um, and Isabel is, she's uh, just a, a, she's a middle-aged woman with two grown children who live on opposite coasts. And she um, she's just trying to keep body and soul together. and keep her property tax, property taxes paid on her house on the lake. And so she does a variety of things to do that, to um, uh, including uh, selling pickles <laughs> at local farm stands and uh, working in her cousin's hardware store. And uh, because she was once a hairdresser, which was a career she didn't like very much, she takes a job, uh, a friend of her, her, a friend from high school is a funeral director and he needs somebody to fix up, as he says, uh, a new client, a new dead client. And um, he pleads with Isabel to please come in and do it for him. And so she agrees to do it. And, uh, and in doing so discovers that this elderly farmer um, probably did not die of, the, uh, uh, of a stroke as um, the coroner said. Um, and that's where the mystery begins. Super fun. Um, I would eat her pickles. I love pickles, especially homemade pickles. So I would buy Isabella's pickles. Puddles pickles. Yes. <laughs> we actually do have a family recipe for pickles, which is why I thought of this. And they're uh, highly coveted within the family and outside the family. We used to barter with them. And um, so that's what made me start thinking about pickles. Plus, it's very alliterative, Puddles pickles. We'll have to find a way for you to be able to send me pickles from the West Coast to the East Coast in a way or, that they won't get broken. Or hopefully, when we <laughs> return to normal, I'll bring you a jar the next time I come to New York. Perfect. I love it. That works for me. Oh, no. Uh, I'm, oh, what's happening now? 
Uh, yeah, I just you guys keep going in and out. I, I, my Wi-Fi was knocked out right before we went on here. Of so, course, uh, I'm on uh, like a pot. Twenty twenty. That's twenty twenty for you. Just every little thing. Exactly. <laughs> every little thing we blame on twenty twenty. <laughs> um, so before you disappear again, Lee. Um, so you. <laughs> right. So you have two other mystery series under your belt. What inspired you to write? Well, besides the whole editor thing. Um, so like what, so I guess this goes back to the CBS show anyway, what inspired you to write the Maya and Sandra series about Sandra, who is a state Senator and a wife and the head of the PTA and Maya, who is a single mother and a private investigator. So like even back before you wrote it into the TV show, what, what inspired you to even do that? Well, I mean, I've uh, Agatha Christie has always been my favorite author. I've always loved mysteries. I grew up watching all the detective shows of the 1970s and 80s. I was an uber, uber fan. And when I got into television as a writer, I just kind of fell into comedy. And I was did a lot of sitcoms. But, but in my heart was always writing mysteries. And so... Uh, I tried with pilots, you know, it seemed like every show I sold was like a comedy or, or you know, but I kept going back and forth writing mysteries. And, and they, they, if you look at all the pilots I wrote, they were cozy mysteries, essentially. I did a pilot for the USA Network called The Nanny Files about a nanny who takes care of a police commissioner's kids and helps him solve mysteries. You know? It was sort of like a new <laughs> Macmillan and wife, you know. And so I always had these ideas that when, uh, uh, you know, when it came time to start writing cozy mysteries, I was like, I felt like I was ready. This is, this is it. This is my time. And, uh, and John was, my editor was, was kind enough to give me the chance. So, uh, so that's how it all got started. Uh, you had an epiphany. But I had been trying to write television mysteries for years. <laughs> so you had an epiphany almost. You were like, I was born. I had an epiphany. Cozies. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And actually, when I worked at Universal for years, um, Angela Lansbury, she'd already wrapped Murder, She Wrote, but she was still doing the um, TV movie versions that they did a few years after the show and had the office next to me. And so I got to see her come in and out of her office. And it was like my heroine, the woman I aspired to write about, you know, <laughs> so that also got the juices going, you know. <laughs> did you ever get her autograph? No, I never dared. I never dared. <laughs> Um, so with, with the, with the Haley Powell mystery series, you're on book 15, right? Uh, yeah, 14. number 14, 14 comes out next year and then we're, we're outlining 15 right now. So um, and that's where the Lee Hollis names come, comes from because my sister does the recipes and the columns and I write the mysteries and we thought it would be clunky to have two names on a book cover for some reason. And so her middle name is Lee and my middle name is oh. Hollis after my grandfather. And so that's how the Lee Hollis name came to be. And then I just uh, started using it in the books I started writing on my own. So yeah, <laughs> with her I blessing, didn't know that. With her blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so with the Haley Powell series, your Desert Flower series, which the third book's coming out in April, and then the yep. Maya and Sandra mystery series, how do you continue to keep ideas fresh when you've written so many mysteries? Like, how do you keep the you know, the, the murder's going. It's hard, but you know, when you've watched as much television and read as much many books as I have, you know, there's always a way to make something old new again. You know, there's only so many ways to kill somebody or, you know, in the certain circumstances. Uh, but um, I, I try never to repeat myself. So uh, yeah, it's hard with all, so many Haley Powell books to, you know, when, when Holly and I will get on the phone and she'll say, oh, we should do this. I'm like, I think we did that in, <laughs> three or four i don't remember what which one it was and so we have to go back and look and try to find so we don't repeat ourselves but as the characters are aging it's making it easier because it opens up fresh storylines especially with the kids oh, we're now adults we're now adults so so in the in the book we're outlining now the son is now is in his 20s he started out at 13 12 or 13 and now he's in his 20s so <laughs> <laughs> so michael this yeah. is your debut novel Yes, it is. <laughs> so I've got a lot more people to kill. <laughs> how does it feel <laughs> to have Isabel Puddles out in the world? It's exciting. Um, I mean, it's been a year since uh, maybe has it been? It's been a year since um, I first sold it to Kensington. So it's been a long um, gestation period. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. It's. Um, 
but it's a it's a bit nerve wracking. I I don't know exactly how it's going to be received. I hope well, obviously, but it's um, you know, it's it, it is my debut novel. It's my first work of fiction, and um, so I'm you know I'm just a little bit nervous, but overall excited. And I just uh, submitted book two um, last week. I keep shaking. My um, so I'm, uh, and I'm going to start outlining, um, book three, uh, shortly. So the, yeah. The, the murders that you have all ready in your head. Um, did you get that partially from like working on a show like murders and what's it called? Murders and mysteries on the oh, mysteries and scandals, mysteries and scandal. Like did it, did watching the, or, you know, working on those shows, like give you ideas for the murders? <laughs> Not really, because those were all um, those were all old Hollywood stories, um, you know, Hollywood mysteries. Um, this, the murder in this in this book, just sort of I don't know, it just came to me. I I, I had no outline. I just went into it writing. I wrote it on spec. I had no. I hoped I might get it published, but I didn't really think I would. You know, it's just yeah. it's sort of an exercise, and um. I wanted to see if I, I I could do it, and um, so the murder just came to me, and um, and, and uh, so I don't, and I, I, as you mentioned in my my bio, I worked for Nancy Grace for a while, and murder was a part of my every every day life, which was not fun. Um, so I, I want I want the murders to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like a good murder should be. So I, they're, <laughs> they're completely pulled out of thin air. I don't base them on anything. Your murder is a little bit unique to a cozy mystery because you. Uh, I feel like oh, I guess it's I guess it's not because like I, you know it is it was it was an interesting it's an interesting way that she finds the murder. So I guess that's why it's unique. Um, I guess because usually the sleuth or someone close to the sleuth usually find the dead body and the murder is very recent. Whereas in Meet Isabel Puddles, the man's already dead and she's working on his uh, hair at the funeral home when she, you know, finds out what happened. So it's a little bit different in that um, he's already been dead for maybe a week. How long are people um, dead for before they're in well, the it was, funeral it, home? He came in, he was, he was, he died the day before. Oh, and, okay. Um, and she she takes the job not only because the funeral director is an old friend and he's kind of desperate because his hair and makeup woman quit on him, but she also knows the family. She knows the farmer and she went to school with his daughter. Um, and so she wants to do it for the family as well. And um, but it's not her first time um, doing that job. She uh, in the first couple of chapters, there's a story of her. The first time she did it was. Um, out of necessity, it was a labor of love because she went to a viewing um, her um, high school lit teacher, who she was a dear friend of hers. And the make whoever did the makeup did not do a terribly good job. I'll just leave it at that. And so she decided to uh, do what she could to to fix her. And uh, so she had done it before, and that's why the funeral director knew she had she had done this at one time before. And um, so she begrudgingly, that time she did it, as I said, out, out of labor of love. This time she just, she did it out of some sense of loyalty to the family and for the money. Because that morning she'd gone, she'd fill up her, she's always strapped for cash. And she took a, a Slurpee cup full of quarters to the gas station that morning to fill up her car. So she was, you know, she needed the money. Yeah. <clears throat> she's, she's very frugal, Isabel. Um, and she's and um, and money's always tight for her. She's a Jill of all trades. She is a Jill of all uh, trades. Um, <laughs> and she's like again. My aunt Isabel was very frugal, and um, I used to tease her because she would wash her tin foil to reuse it. But I just always got a kick out of that. <laughs> and she was like, well, why wouldn't I? Like, well, I don't know. I guess I don't have a good answer for that. But why would you? Like, I was just gonna say I I do that. <laughs> <laughs> if it's like not covered in grease, <laughs> you know, just kind of like if it's like bread, you know, just wipe it off. <laughs> so I guess I am like Aunt Isabel. And well, Isabel I guess Puddles. If, if there's ever a tin shortage in the world, we'll all be doing that. That's also true. Learn from Isabel Puddles. Um, 
So the both of you have had somewhat a similar career trajectory. I can't pronounce this word. See, um, I can read really well, but then when it comes to Dectrin. speaking, I can't speak. <laughs> trajectory. So you both worked <laughs> in screenwriting and television before you turned towards writing books. And not only did you both turn from working in TV and movies to writing books, but you specifically turned to writing mysteries. Um, so Rick, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, so I guess this is more for uh, MV Burn. So why did you think when you started to write books that mysteries what were what you were driven towards? Well, I became familiar with the cozy mystery genre because Rick and I are friends and I had read some of his books. And I, I, I've always loved mysteries, but um, I also like comedy. And cozy mysteries offered an opportunity to, as I said before, like write fun murders. And, um, and I, I, I'm not capable of writing anything terribly dark. Um, so it, um, so that's, why I, that's how I was introduced to the genre of cozy mysteries. And um, I actually wrote the first one because um, a show that I was supposed to work on, a pilot, fell through at the last minute. But I had set aside the time for it, and I had two months to kill. And I thought, this is a good time to try this. And I had this idea for a char character in mind. And um, so, yeah, I, I mean, Rick, Rick's uh, um, uh, scripted writer-producer, and I'm, I've <clears throat> I'm exclusively an unscripted writer producer. So we're, we've been on very different tracks, but I think both of us have kind of maybe I, I maybe I shouldn't speak for Rick, but I think we both kind of had our bill of TV um, <laughs> after a quarter century working in it. And it's, it's fun to do something different. It's fun to not get, have to deal with network notes for one thing, you know, it's like you, you're, you have complete ownership of the story and the writing and it's so refreshing. So how is writing books different than writing for TV and film? Because I know, like, not, I don't know a lot about TV or uh, unscripted versus scripted. Um, but, you know, even in with a lot of un unscripted, a lot of it's still, like, kind of scripted, right? Well, reality TV now is is doesn't have much to do with reality. It is scripted. And, yeah, I write scripts for, for on-air talent and... Um, but it's I'm I'm always writing for somebody. I'm not writing in my own voice. I'm writing in somebody in whoever the talent is writing in their voice. So, so in that regard, it is scripted. I mean, they do I do submit a script, and they <clears throat> sometimes read the script. Sometimes not. <laughs> um, but yeah, but there are other than that, there aren't really very many parallels between my TV work and this. How about you, Rick? Um, the, the biggest difference is, is how long it takes. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. a, a screenplay, I, I can write a first draft between three weeks to a m month. Um, a book is three to four months to, to just get the first draft uh, for me. So it's, it's a long process. However, the, developing the story is very similar. Like I... You know, coming out of television, I outline everything very detailed, I, and it works for me because I like to know where I'm going. I like to know which chapter is going to end where with a cliffhanger to keep keep the interest up and keep the reader engaged. And so I do outline and 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 uh, plot like I'm writing a TV movie or a feature film. Uh, but the beauty of writing the books is you can go off on on character tangents that that. TV doesn't as appreciate as much, you know. You know, they, they like moments, but you know, with with Haley Powell or Poppy Harmon or Maya and Sandra, I can I can just go off and, and really explore the character in a much deeper level since I'm I'm basically, even though I write in the third person, I'm really telling the story from their points of view. Um and the interesting thing about Maya and Sandra, which uh, in Murder at the PTA, uh, which was a lot of fun for me, is that it was the first time. I told a, a cozy mystery from two different points of view. One chapter would be Sandra, one chapter would be Maya, and it would alternate. and And I found that great because you know, you know, you're always with the same person, you see, like Isabel or or Poppy, and 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 so it gave me an opportunity to enter two totally different worlds and tell the story from uh, different angles. So that was really fun, and and uh, carried over in the second book, which just came out 
this week um, at Barnes and Noble exclusive. But Murder at the Bake Sale, if, if you like Murder at the BTA. <laughs> but it'll be available this time next year to everybody. Everywhere. <laughs> right now, buy Murder at the PTA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so writing, so you said that it was more fun to write two different um, sides of the story, but was it, did it take you longer to do that? Or was it actually faster to write two different points of view? No, I mean, as I plotted it out, it's like any, you know, it's like when I did the TV pilot, you know, for, uh, uh, you have different scenes with different people. And I, it, it actually opened up the storytelling because when you're with one character, you can't, you can only go a certain way. You know, you, she's not all knowing. And so with Maya and Sandra, it was great to meet them in their different worlds. And they don't even come together until about a third of the way into the book. You know, you're, you're seeing what's happening and as the story's progressing and you're going back and forth and getting to know them. And then when they come together, you feel like you already know both women. And then, the, 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 when, then they take off together. And that was really fun. It just, it just was something different I hadn't done before in, in, in prose books. I never, I never even thought of that. <laughs> um, now that I think about it, um, so so Rick, the audience here tonight, I'm sure, is very familiar with Haley Powell and Poppy Harmon. Um, <clears throat> but I think we all want to know what makes these newcomer sleuths, Maya and Sandra, such a special investigating duo, and why why will readers love these two women? I think um, uh, because they're both accomplished in their own right. They knew each other in high school and uh, Maya was kind of the one in the, you know, kind of one of the, not the bad girls, but she was just, you know, not popular and she was kind of tough and uh, uh, blue collar. And Sandra was the cheerleader and kind of the mean girl, but she wasn't that mean, but Maya remembers her as being mean. <laughs> and so they are, they were, they never really took each other seriously or got to know each other in high school. And so what makes it special is that these two women from so different worlds, you know, one's hosting luncheons in Washington, D.C. and, you know, sailing on the weekends in Maine with her husband. And, and the other one's struggling to pay the bills and raising a daughter because her, her, her husband's in prison. Um, and so I think what makes them special is that how two different worlds can come together and, and actually uh, friendship can spark. And that's the whole basis of the series is opposites. These two opposites learn to work together and actually find out that they're uh, good at it and they do respect each other. And they, and they learn to respect each other in the course of Murder at the PTA. But you don't know if they're gonna team up again. It's kind of a one-time thing, but you know, since there's a sequel, you could probably guess. <laughs> <laughs> So, Michael, same question for you. Um, meet <clears throat> Isabel Puddles is the first time we're ever meeting Isabel Puddles. So what makes her so special and why will people, you know, what will people love um, and enjoy reading about her? Well, she's very relatable, I think, to a lot of not just women, but people. She's she's very she's not at all pretentious. She's um, she's very funny. And she's a loyal friend and a and a solid member of the community. And um, she's uh, yeah, I think she's just I don't know really what makes her likable. She's just she just is. You know you, you know how you just like some people when you meet them and you don't like others. Um, and she's somebody that if you met her, you would like her because she would make you feel. Um, they always say that. Uh, you know, when somebody makes you feel good about yourself, that's um, that's somebody you're going to like. And she's, you know, she's just a very caring person. And um, yeah, I don't, yeah. But I can't imagine anybody not liking Isabel. And if you don't like Isabel, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like people who don't like puppies. Exactly. Right. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah I think she even brings that up in the book that, because that, she's a, an animal lover. She has two. She has one animal. She starts with one dog that she's devoted to, and she works at a local animal shelter volunteering. And um, yeah, I think she she says something like that. Like if you don't like dogs, I don't like you. I can't trust somebody who doesn't like dogs. I feel the same way. If you don't like dogs. There, <laughs> there's an issue somewhere. I yeah. You, yeah. 
I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so she's just one of those people who welcomes you with open <laughs> arms, no matter who you are. She just accepts you for who you are immediately, and you just maybe she's just one of those peaceful, calming. She is her her sidekick Francis, who she's been friends with since kindergarten, is not that way at all. Francis is a complete <laughs> the complete opposite. She's very opinionated and brash and says anything that comes to mind. Isabel's a bit more circumspect and diplomatic. And um, so she <clears throat> has to keep a tight harness on Francis because you never know what Francis is gonna say. Um, so we touched on this a little bit, um, but in your dedication, Michael, you wrote that Me Isabel Puddles is de uh, dedicated to your aunt because she taught you how to be funny. So I guess this is for the both of you, since you both write humorous cozies. Um, why do you think humor is so important in a cozy mystery and for your and for your characters and for your books? Oh, well, um, I think it, oh, go ahead. No, Rick. go ahead, Rick. Um, I was just going to say It's like the Rachel Maddow show where everybody's talking over each other. Okay, Rick, you go first. I wrote the dedication. I think I, what I wrote was who taught me everything I know about funny. Because um, my Aunt Isabel was just, not only was she very funny, but she had an appreciation for humor. And so she, I, I can just remember watching certain television shows with her and, and um, that, that, you know, um, so she, that's, she taught me an appreciation for humor and also humor as a uh, way of um, just coping with life in general. I don't know how people go through life without a sense of humor. It's got to be pretty dreary. <laughs> there was a, a, a expression in my family uh, that was attributed to my great grandmother, but she probably ripped it off from somebody. Um, and that was uh, no laughing matter, but no matter if you laugh. And in my family, everything is, you can find humor in almost everything, even when you shouldn't, probably. I find that I tend to laugh when I'm panicking, like something snaps in my brain and I just start cracking up so yeah like the worst circumstances i will start laughing and i have and people get offended and i'm like i'm sorry just my brain <laughs> like it's like it's like how my brain reacts to like bad moments is <laughs> just to just be like <laughs> it's better than sobbing nobody wants somebody sobbing around them they're all like hmm. oh, God, i think with me. i think with cozy cozy mysteries you're dealing with murder uh, but you're in this cozy, nice setting. So I think humor takes the edge off a little bit because, you know, this isn't James Patterson. It's not, you know, CJ Box or these 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 uh, authors who go write, write very dark, you know, thrillers, you know, cozy. And so for, and I think that's why I was drawn to them. I was always drawn to shows like Heart to Heart and Macmillan and Wife and Charlie's Angels because there was a light touch to all the mayhem and the murder. And uh, I also, I grew up, uh, you know, my parents were very funny people and I just, I just watched them, you know, back and forth. And so, and so it, it was kind of a surprise that I got involved in comedy. My first show, you know, the Golden Girls and then watching them was like watching the all-star comedy star, you know, team in action. And it just, I just kind of learned from, from them, you know, how to hone, hone comedy and really you know, deliver on it, on it, you know, and sometimes you fail and sometimes you, you hit it out of the park. So you never know. <laughs> uh, speaking of, speaking of funny. Um, so your character of Haley Powell is based on your hilarious sister, as you mentioned. Yes. And I've met her and she is truly hilarious. Um, yes. It's her birthday today. <laughs> oh, is she happy watching? Birthday, Holly. I know Holly. She is very funny. Happy birthday, Holly. <laughs> um, and we all know at this point that um, Isabel Puddles is based off of Michael's aunt, but we haven't talked about Maya and Sandra. Are they based on anyone in your life or are they entirely your own creation? <clears throat> they are entirely my own creation. Um, you know, it's so funny as, as there are aspects of them that reflect me, but you know, uh, uh, you know, the, certain parts of their personalities I try to inject because you know I, un I I love them both equally because they're so different but you you know you can find parts within yourself 
that you can attribute to each one and give give them you know certain like like Sandra tends to babble on like I tend to babble on and and um, and then Maya can be very sarcastic and Mike can tell you I can be very sarcastic. Um, <laughs> can so, be. Uh, so there are elements, you know, but they are totally original. Like I couldn't pick someone in my life. Like there are characters in the Desert Flowers and the Poppy Harmon series who I, I know. Iris is a supporting character who's based on a, a German friend of both of Mike and mine, Brigitta, definitely channeling her when I write her. But Maya and Sandra are completely uh, <clears throat> originals. Um, Michael, are any of the characters, did, did you infuse your personality into any of them? The way that Rick used a little bit Probably of Probably more than I'd like to admit, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think short answer is yes. Um, but uh, not just not just with Isabel, but there are a lot of funny characters in this book um, and in the second book. And yeah, I think um, I've inserted a little or injected a little bit of my sense of humor in, into all of them. I'm just a funny guy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? I'm funny. People are, people are leaving in droves. People are leaving in droves. <laughs> <laughs> I just think there's just more in life to laugh about than there is to, to cry about. But, uh, yeah. So I try to get, that's what gets me through life. It's certainly what's gotten me through 2020. <clears throat> <laughs> So we're coming up on 36 minutes. So I wanted to do a lightning round really quick, but before we do that, oh um, before I forget to answer, ask an important question, which is uh, what's up next for you both and what should readers be looking out for after they're done reading uh, Meet Isabel Puddles and Murder at the PTA? Uh, I'll go first. Um, uh, well, if once they finish Murder at the PTA, they can put their mask on and go to Barnes and Noble and buy the sequel, Murder at the Bake Sale, which is available now. And then the next Desert Flowers mystery is Poppy Harmon and the Pillow Talk Killer, and that will be out in April, I believe. Um, March thirtieth. March thirtieth, and uh, uh, and uh, the paperback version, the paperback of the second book, Poppy Harmon and the Hung Jury is also out in February, I believe. Um, and uh, and then the next Haley Powell book is Death of an Italian Chef with lots of Italian recipes that my sister came up with. Uh, and that, I don't know when that's coming out, April or May of next year. So we got a few coming out. And I've seen the cover for that one. It's really cute. It's adorable. I so love everyone it. Everyone check yes. <laughs> out the cover on Mysterious Galaxy's website and pre-order it. <laughs> and oh, I guess I shouldn't be pushing Barnes & Noble, should I? <laughs> <laughs> But they, everyone Duh. has plenty of other books by you that they can buy from Mysterious Galaxy. Yes, go to Mysterious Galaxy. Galaxy. Go to Mysterious Galaxy. <laughs> and Michael, what's up next for you? Rick is so much more prolific than I am, it's embarrassing. <clears throat> um, well, Isabel Puddles Investigates is coming out December 2021. Um, so, and then sometime between now and then I have to write book three, which I... Um, just started to outline. Um, and I have oh, actually my first venture in scripted television is a, a Western on INSP called the Wild West Chronicles. And I'm going to come back and write a second season for them um, uh, sometime in early next year. Um, and other than that, uh, I'm not doing anything. That's it. <laughs> Do you have an idea of what the name of book three will be? Uh, well, John, she's going to go abroad in book three. I got John to agree to, I wanted to send her to the UK. Um, so she's going to the UK. So I don't know if we decided on Isabel Puddles abroad or Isabel Puddles overseas, but those were the two titles. John likes the, uh, um, the, the, uh, simple, like three word titles. And it was his idea to put Isabel Puddles in the, in the title. Um, I, I loved the name, but I had some silly title for the the manuscript that I sent him. But he, um, yeah, that was his idea, so I credit him for that. I like Isabel. Um, I like Isabel Puddles abroad. So, John, if you're watching this, or so I do too. This, I, that was actually mine, but I. 
But if he wants to go with overseas, I defer to John for whatever he wants to do. <laughs> All right, real quick, let's do this lightning round. Let's see <clears> if it works. So far, lightning rounds on uh, virtual have been a little iffy. So um, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is to make it less awkward, I'm gonna ask the question, Rick will answer first and then Michael. That way no one's yelling at the same time. Um, and then same, Rick, you always answer first. Michael, you always okay. answer first. And the reason we're doing that is because Rick is the veteran writer here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, <clears throat> favorite mystery author? Agatha Christie, uh, yeah, by far. <laughs> what if I had the same answer? Do I? Oh, it's okay. It's the same answer. Some, yeah, okay. I think she's my favorite too. She's the master. Um, she is the master. Uh, what is a book that you're currently reading? Uh, Moon Pie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. The I just started the Magpie. I just started uh, a John Irving book. I don't think it's his latest, but it's called Avenue of Mysteries. <clears throat> okay. I don't, yeah. It's so far so good. <laughs> it's no prayer for Owen Meany, but it's good. Book you recently read and recommend? Hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> um, I can't, I don't want to get political, so I can't say what I just no. would read. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I, I I recently read The Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. That's why I'm reading the sequel, because I love the first one so much. It's a there wonderful mystery book, yes. I guess I would have to recommend Murder at the PTA. It's my, <laughs> if, I if I wasn't going to recommend Me Does It Ball Puddles, I would recommend Murder at the PTA. Trying to get those friend points in. Be like, I'm a yeah. friend. <laughs> Are you a plotter or a pantser? A plotter or a what? Panster. Do you just like write like this or do you, you plot everything out? Oh, plotter, plotter. My What's God. the other one? Panster? Panster. That's what they call it. When you're just like writing at the seat, you're just flying on your pants. That's me. Yeah. That's okay. totally a panster. I've never heard that expression, but I'm a panster with my writing. I'm and... pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> I'm in life, I'm a panster. Um, since we're in the midst of the holidays, what is your favorite holiday food? Um, I love eggnog. I've okay. never had eggnog, Michael. Oh, I love it. well, and with a little with a little rum added. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, my my favorite holiday food. Um, I don't know stuffing or cookies. <laughs> love stuffing. And, both in the same sitting, I find. Yeah. Not a big all those carbs. You just want to put yourself to sleep. I'm um, all about carb loading for the holidays. <laughs> and I'll torture myself in the new year. <laughs> if you could be a character from one of your books, who would it be? Um, I would be Haley's brother, Randy, who owns the bar Drinks Like a Fish. Because he's kind of loosely based on me. So, um, So that's probably who I would be. Michael? I would probably be Grady, who's the sheriff in town. Um, <laughs> he's not as much fun as Gil, the funeral director, but I don't, don't want to be a funeral director. So I would go with Grady. Yeah. And lastly, if you weren't a writer, what other profession would you want to be in? I would, <laughs> not that I'm gunning for your uh, John's job, but I would love to be a book editor. I love reading so much. I think I'd want to be Ooh. a book editor. It's mm -hmm. a good choice. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I wanted to be um, a pilot when I was a kid until I took an aviation class and just flunked miserably. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I always wanted to be a pilot when I was a kid. So yeah, I think I'd do that. Those Not sound a, like fun jobs. I don't even like to fly, so I don't even know why I brought that up. <laughs> All right, let's move on to questions um what <clears throat> part of your new book was the most challenging to write and what part brought you the most joy let's go with Rick uh, first. okay um let's see uh the most challenging um part was uh the twist at the end which i can't reveal i i wanted to do something 
that no one saw coming. You, you always try to do something that no one saw coming. But this time, I really felt I accomplished it. And, you know, you go on Goodreads and and you read, and a lot of people said they never saw it coming, which made me so happy. But it was challenging to get there in the plotting. And the greatest joy was getting to know these characters in this first book. It was like discovering new friends that I could hang out with. And uh, and that's that was the most fun part of the book. What about for you, Michael? For me, the challenge was adhering to, to create a structure and then adhere to a structure because I didn't go into this book with an outline. Book two, I did, uh, which was very helpful. But um, so that was a challenge to just stick with a plot and and make sure everything um, was in sync. I sometimes would forget plot points and have to go back and like, oh wait, that doesn't work. So that that became a challenge for me. But what was most enjoyable for me was just writing dialogue. I just love to write dialogue. And being able to pay homage to my aunt and to that this part of Michigan that I really love, that I've, I've fictionalized for the most part. Although anybody who knows that part of Western Michigan will know exactly the part of the state I'm talking about. But that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, this question is from Annie. Do you, uh, so, we know about how you outline the books, but do you loosely outline the entire series as well? Uh, no, I go from book to book. So I reach an end point with the first for like Murder at the PTA. And then when I start to think about the second book, I pick up where I left off and try to come up with a, a whole new mystery, bringing the characters forward and deepening them and all of that, you know. So, but I don't plan a series like Game of Thrones or <laughs> like that. I don't go that far, you know. And the Haley Powell series was great because, you know, I didn't plan it, but I got to see the characters growing over a period of time and it just happened naturally as you write the, write the books. So it's almost like watching your old, own children grow yeah, through a book, yeah. Mm -hmm. Michael, how about you? No, no, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't even know I would be asked to write two more books. So when I, when John bought this book and, and we met and he said he wanted to buy two more, I was, uh, I don't know if I have two more in me. I might be a one trick pony. <laughs> you got it now. <laughs> this could be it. <laughs> so um, no, th I, the challenge in book two though was. Um, making reference to book one without without um, telling too much of the story, without revealing, uh, with the assumption that some people would read book two having not read book one. Um, so that was a bit of a challenge because uh, I didn't want to bore people who'd r read book one with rehashing a lot of stuff. <clears throat> and um, yeah, no, I don't. I Book three, I have a rough idea of what's going to happen. And Beyond book three, I don't even know if that's going to happen. So I haven't, I haven't thought about it. Um, this one is from Lisa. Why did both of you choose to write female protagonists instead of male protagonists? Hi, Lisa. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's funny. In the cozy mystery world, uh, uh, they um, uh, there are a lot of most of the protagonists are female, and so. Um, I had written I had written another series under my own name for John years ago, um, and uh, it was a male protagonist uh, that was very close to me. But when uh, we discussed doing a cozy mystery, a new series uh, eight years ago, ten, eight, nine years ago, um, the character it was actually his suggestion. He had met my sister uh, at a awards ceremony. We were we met in D.C. Uh, one of my books was nominated, and John came down, and we were all there. And I brought my sister, and they hit it off like gangbusters and he said you should write a book about her because she was writing recipes in our hometown uh newspaper in bar harbor maine so and so i had so much fun and i've always loved writing female characters you know with the golden girls and everything i just i it's just kind of seems natural for me how about you michael yeah, i uh i've been working on a, a novel with a male protagonist for years and it's much uh, closer to home for me. It's a, about a disgruntled television news writer <laughs> living in New York City. It's when I was working for Nancy Grace when I started that. Um, but I got bored with that. I'm, I might finish it someday, but it, it maybe was a little bit too close to home. Um, <laughs> I think 
I didn't even consider writing a male protagonist in this mystery. I just, um, because I know that most of the protagonists are women and I've always enjoyed reading um, female protagonists. And, um, and also I grew up with a lot of strong women. I mean, not only my Aunt Isabel, but my mother who is, uh, had a very dry sense of humor and my grandmother were all very powerful forces in my life. And so I, I've always had women's voices in my head. And I think I draw from all three of those women um, in, in writing these characters. Um, yeah, I don't, I might try to write an, a, a male character, male, male protagonist at some point, but um, I'm not in any hurry. And you both have written for women before, like Rick, you've written, you know, you wrote for the Golden Girls, so you already kind of got a feel for that. And then you, Michael, worked with Tyra Banks and Nancy Jones, so you, I'm, I'm guessing you just know women very well. <laughs> Well, um, I mean, I'm sorry. Was okay. that the question? <laughs> no, it was just me talking. Oh. <laughs> just, my, just my two cents. Um, here's another one that's sort of similar. Were there any particular challenges either one of you have faced from being a male author in the cozy world that is predominantly, predominantly dominated by female authors? Rick? Have you, oh, no, you frozen? I think, he's I think frozen. Rick, I think Rick froze is, again. All right, she's really giving this question a lot of thought. I can't tell which. Um, <laughs> for me, no. I, 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 um, no. I haven't felt any uh, anything like that. Well, we have one more question, which is um, hopefully Rick will come back for it. Uh, was there any fun, interesting research that you uh, had to do for Isabel Puddles? Um, <clears throat> you know, there were, I would just suddenly fi I find myself writing something that I would just do a quick Google check, but uh, to make sure I was accurate, but nothing required, there's nothing in this book that required, required any extensive research. And as I said, I'm writing about an area that I know very well and, um, so just, you know, cursory things, I would have to just do a quick Google check and that was it. Yeah, I think Rick is gone for good. He's, oh, there he is. What is wrong with his internet? <clears throat> Mine is usually the really spotty one, I'm amazed. <laughs> you guys swap for the day. We'll see if he comes back. I feel like he might be coming back. I always hate how like on a Zoom call, and like my inter internet will randomly freeze and everyone's like last view of me is like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost Rick. Well, we're pretty close to the end of the hour anyway. Um, so I'm gonna say that this is, our event is coming to an end. So for everyone watching tonight, thank you so much. And don't forget to buy Meet Isabel Puddles by M.V. Byrne, and you'll have, and he signed book plates for Mysterious Galaxy and Murder at the PTA by Lee Hollis, who also um, signed personalized, uh, signed book plates. Um, yeah. I'll refund your money if you hate it. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> well, thank you. Tell so me exactly why you hate it. Write an essay, and I have to agree with you, and then I will send you a check. <laughs> If you provide a TED Talk on it, then. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Larissa. Thank you so much for moderating tonight. Yes, thank and you. thank you for joining us. Lee, if you are out there in the interweb somewhere, we hope this thank you. Oh, Bye. there it is. That was too uncanny. That was like <clears throat> the internet. Odds. We're like, I know. We should. Anyway. <laughs> but you are back in time to say goodbye to everyone and thank you so uh, much for uh, joining I, us. Make sure you go out, buy the book. The buy button time. is down below there for you guys. And before the internet gods disappear at us again, have a good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Constance. Thanks. Thank Larissa. you. Thank you for having I'll, us. Talk to you later, Rick. He's frozen again. <laughs>